most of you know that um, for 50 years now, I've uh, my job has been playing music, and uh, it sort of happened by accident. I um, started learning to play the guitar, got saved, and then I started singing for Jesus, and I guess I got okay at it, and then people invited me, come, could you play a song here, and then they heard me. And then I played there, and then I was getting invited to play all over and ended up recording a record. And... Did you have to go to the bathroom? No. <laughs> What's your question, grandson? Well, the first time you ever played was for a um, sandwich, right? Oh, that's right. If you, if you look on my Spotify, I, this might be elsewhere too, but on, on the Spotify page about me, it says that my very first paid for performance was, how old was I? Five, five years old, that's right. I was, I was balancing on a curb, dropping sticks into a rain gutter, yeah. singing, I've been working on the rail, at like the top of my lungs at like 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> and all of a sudden across the street, a window goes up on the second story of this house, and this messed up hair, beautiful college age girl. Screams down, who's that singing down there? And I'm like, me! <laughs> and the window closed. And next thing you know, the, the, the downstairs door opens, she goes, come here! And so I walked over there and they invited me in for pancakes. So I say that my very oh. first paid <laughs> performance was I got paid, for, I sang for my breakfast. <laughs> So, Mr. and Mrs. Sud, if you ever see this, I never forgot you. <laughs> so, I'll sing you a few songs this morning, okay? We're all gathered here because we all.
you play with my iPhone that makes me think you like it. I do. Many years ago, um, my dad played the guitar and uh, wrote music a little bit. And this is a song that he wrote the words to that um, sat, I had it in the Bible for many, many, many years. And one day I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to put a, a melody to it. And it's on one of our records. I think it's on Spotify and stuff. God's quite the artist, amen? Mm -hmm. And um, I just look at the sunset and go, wow. Yeah, I think that's you know, and the beauty of the mountains and everything. So this is a song my dad wrote. Mm -hmm. I would not try to tell an artist how to paint the sunset here. I could not choose the color tints or know what kind of brush to use. And I think that I should like to watch the artist get his time. And why he made this stroke or that, I'm sure I would not have. And if his work half finished looked like something, something else apart, I know that I should try and remember he's a master. A master in his art. So I wonder why it is that I so often in my prayers have told the master all about the cares I brought him.
they, they believe in God and serve him because they think he's Santa Claus in the sky. You know? And uh, we don't we should not pray to God just because we want some something, right? We should pray to him because we love him and want to converse with him. And yes, it's okay to bring our needs and cares to him. He wants us to. You know? But I don't usually tell God how to answer my prayers. I might make a suggestion or two, but she'll go. <laughs> And how many of you can agree with me that you try to figure out how God's going to do something? And it always is some other amazing way. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Because you're not smart. I mean, <laughs> hey, right. God always seems to answer our prayers in some miraculous way that we've never, ever dreamed is possible. Yeah. You know, I like when, when God's in the Old Testament, he's talking to, to Job. He's going, who do you think you are? You know, the Jew. Do you know how the cow... Gets milk. Do you know how the universe was created? Were you there when I hung those, you know? Okay, don't be telling me nothing, you know? Trust God. He knows what's going on. Amen? Well, I keep getting a request for this song. Zachary, if you're watching, you always ask me for this song. I think Felicity did last week, too. And um, this is a, a, a song I wrote quite a few years ago. It was on, on my Black Paid For record, which is no longer available. I know Adam, you got me to make you a copy and send it to you. But um, it's called Go the Second Mile. And in the Bible, it talks about, you know, hey, if someone wants you to walk one mile, go with them two. And there's, <clears throat> there's a, a story about why that is that way. It used to be the Roman soldiers, I guess, which would make you, then you carry their swords and stuff. And, yeah. and, and then for a mile, you were required to walk a mile. And what Paul is saying there is, um, is it Paul? Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, cut that out of the video. Um, <laughs> if someone asks you to walk a mile, walk two miles. And what does that show them? You know, our, our attitude and our care, you know, whatever. And, um, so anyway, this is a song. There's three verses to it. All three verses are true that happened in my life. And, uh,
that song, but the first verse I was riding along coming home, drove it through the night coming home from a tour, you know, about 40 miles from home, and I listened to sing a little song to someone who's weary, make their day a little more cheery. I mean, I'm just staying awake and having a good time. And I saw this little boy at a bus stop, dressed in holy jeans and a winter jacket, smoking a cigarette. He must have been about eight years old. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, what kind of family does he come from? Has anybody ever invited him to Sunday school or anything? Then I got home and my wife's brother, uh, John, his friend, 16 years old, was hunting, wasn't he, honey? No, they were tossing a football. Tossing a football and all of a sudden had a heart attack and died at 16 years old. I thought, darn it, they ever invite him to church or anything to tell him about Jesus? So I decided I was going to try to do an outreach in my community instead of traveling all over the place. And I thought, well, if I live here, I might as well do something here too, you know? And um, so I thought, nursing homes! And so I went to visit the nursing home and ran into this lady that was, um, uh, have you ever heard my song, My Best Friend and Me? Skippy, it was his grandmother, and um, she was in the, sitting in a chair, went, oh, this is Williamson, so I went up and touched her, and she jumped, jumped, and the lady said, she's completely blind and completely deaf, total silence, total, total darkness, and had been that way for over a decade, and no one ever came to see her, and uh, so I made it my commitment to show her some love and uh, give her hope. But before I left that first visit, she had she, about an hour or so left her visit. She goes, do you think you could help me get some medicine so I can die? I don't want to live anymore. Well, can you blame her? Yeah. And, and then the Lord spoke, I, mean, I, I, I said, how is it possible, God? But I'm traveling all over, singing about this little light of mine, you know, in the darkness of being cast away and and here in my own city, there's a lady who's lived in total darkness for 10 years and not shown the love of Christ. And so I said, Lord, if, if what you say is true, if the light that you have pierces any darkness, and if the joy that you give us can make anyone have a reason to stay alive, now's the time to prove it to me. And the only way you could talk to her is by taking, she refused, she was stubborn, refused to learn any type of communication. Um, she was mad. Except that one of the, the uh, recreation directors invented a thing where you draw one, uh, one letter at a time in her hand and spell out small words. It took me an hour to tell her my name was Mark. You know, it's like, and so I said, you know what, I'm gonna tell her Jesus loves her. So I, I went, J. J. E. S. U. S. And you tapped twice. And she said, I don't know. J. E. S. U. S. I don't know. I don't know that word. J. E. S. U. S. I don't know that word. So I said, How can I tell you about Jesus? Well, I noticed she was wearing a crucifix underneath her pajamas. And um, I asked the, the recreation director, I said, why, why, she's wearing a cross, a crucifix, does she go to church or anything? No, a nurse gave her that just so she could feel pretty. So how I told her about Jesus, so I took her finger and I rubbed it on the cross on the crucifix. She went, Jesus! And I went, because you put your hand on her cheek and you put her head up and or on your cheek. Yes, Jesus. And I spelled out loves. Yeah. And a tear formed in her eyes. The first time in over 10 years she heard his name. There's people all around us that need the Lord. You know? So go the second mile, people. Go out of your way. Tell people you love them. Listen to where God leads you, you know. But life is easy. When you're up on the mountain And you've got peace of mind That you've never known But then things change And you're down in the valley But 
Don't lose faith, Lord. You're never alone. And the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. Amen. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. La 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 We can skip it. We talk of faith when we're up on the mountain. The talk comes easy. The life's at its best. But it's down in the valley of trials and temptations. That's when faith is really put to the test. If you know it, sing it with me. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. God of the day is still God in the night. What a great song. No matter what we're going through, there's sometimes God seems like he's silent. Right? And we wonder how he's going to take care of things, but he will always do it. And usually it's a surprise how it happens. But he takes care of every need, loves us through everything, and there really is truth to that point, to that one footprints poem where it says, uh, I only saw one, ta one pair of feet, how come you weren't walking with me? And he said, that's why I picked you up. Right. It's two minutes after the Why didn't you use that other guitar? Go for it. One more song. We gotta go to our family Thanksgiving and birthday party this afternoon. This sounds a little different because it's, this is coming from this instead of that, guys. Below. 
Thinking about loved ones gone before me, wondering when it will be my time to go. I'm dreaming about heaven. Sitting at the cabin in the rocking chair, listen to the music floating through the air. If I look closely, I can see my Lord Jesus pointing his finger at me. I'm going to hell. Just pilgrims passing through, amen? Amen. amen.